Time now for the evening rush. New video shows the man accused of shooting and killing a UNM baseball player outside a Knob Hill bar being arrested months before. It's an arrest many believe should have kept him behind bars. Y'all call me whatever y'all want to call me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Police say they were on a call near San Mateo and Catherine when bullets flew past them. They followed a car, pulled it over, and found Bashir, his cousin, D'Angelo McNeil, and two others inside. So it's going to be hot tomorrow, but as we head into Sunday, that's when we see our next weather maker move in. Notice the cloud cover and showers from Raton to Clayton. This is a backdoor cold front that's going to work its way into eastern parts of the state. We're talking about temperatures falling 10 to even up to 30 degrees, as well as an increase in moisture. Dean? All right, Chris, thank you. A deputy being questioned for tasing a student at Española High School has been questioned for deploying his taser before. That is Rio Arriba County Deputy Jeremy Barnes tasing a 15-year-old special education student after that teen called him a derogatory name. Back in 2013, Barnes and three other officers were accused of repeatedly tasing a handcuffed suspect. Two Roswell firefighters are still in a Lubbock hospital, but the condition of one of them appears to be improving. Hobie Bonham and Jeff Strobel were injured in the Wednesday explosion as they boxed up fireworks for the 4th of July celebration. Bonham's family says while he was, has severe burns, he is alert and talking. Strobel is still in critical condition. As the investigation ramps up, authorities are now cleaning up the remaining fireworks at the storage area where that explosion happened. They detonated them, saying the intense heat of the explosion and fire may have damaged them. Looking ahead to Thursday, when a teen accused of fatally shooting his mother's boyfriend will be arraigned on lesser charges. A Santa Fe grand jury has downgraded a murder charge against 16-year-old Hunter Woods. He's now facing a count of voluntary manslaughter. Woods is accused of shooting Ricardo Magana at an apartment complex in April. No, at 6, the governor will have to pick John Pinto's replacement and the Navajo Nation Council is calling on Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham to appoint a Navajo to fill the seat of State Senator John Pinto. San Juan County Commissioners are taking applications for the position and they will recommend the candidates to the governor. The Planning and Zoning Department are recommending the city's Environmental Planning Commission deny a proposal to expand a gas station next Thursday. The proposal will allow the Valero near Bridge and Old Coors to add extra gas pumps and put in a new convenience store that would include liquor sales. Those who live nearby say this would increase crime and cause traffic problems. APD says they now have leads on the people who vandalized a rainbow crosswalk with their motorcycles. The suspects left behind these burnout marks. They plan to press charges. Vandals could face felony charges depending on the cost of the damage. You still have a few hours to attend Pride Fest tonight. Entry is free. If you don't go tonight, you can go to the parade at 10 tomorrow morning. The route runs from Central and Girard ending at Expo. New this year, you and your friends can participate in an escape room. Well, we continue to get a chance of rain, but water waste violations are actually up. Water Authority officials say they've already had 67 reports just in the last two months. Officials say this is almost double what they had at this time last year. But overall water usage is down from last year. Anyone who sees a violation is asked to report it directly to the Water Authority. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham is voicing opposition to a plan that would build a facility to store nuclear waste in New Mexico. Holtec International wants to construct the facility about 35 miles east of Carlsbad. The governor is sending a letter to Energy Secretary Rick Perry saying it poses a risk to residents and the environment. Well, the Metro Threat Index tonight is low. We're talking about a zero, but as we head into tomorrow, that Metro Threat Index goes up to a four. We're talking about a high of 92 degrees. Stay hydrated and wear that sunscreen. Dean? All right, Chris, thank you. The city says it does not hand out citations for keeping a lost pet often, but they did cite one woman. Days after finding a lost dog, Teresa Smith says she got a call from Animal, animal Welfare telling her to return it. After that, Smith says she only kept the dog for a night, but was given a notice saying she's been charged for not returning a lost or found pet. Records show that charge was dismissed. UNM says some students may have been affected by messages aimed at stealing their identities. The university says accounts were being used to send out emails telling students their financial aid applications were incomplete. They say that emails directed students to fake websites where they were asked to put in personal information. Staff is helping those students. You can now attend class at CNM however you want, and it's launching in time for the fall semester. Attend anywhere courses, let students attend classes in person or watch on high definition video.
They can also watch recorded lectures. And students will be able to move back and forth throughout the semester. This is launching in the fall. Veterans returning home to a warm welcome after spending part of the week in Washington, D.C. for the honor flight. More than two dozen local veterans made the trip where they got to visit the memorials paying tribute to the wars they fought in, including the World War II, Korean War and Vietnam monuments.